Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, nandito po tayo once again. And good evening, we're here live at the Ultimate Fan Hub Podcast, where it's made by the fans. For the, the fans. fans! Of course, Jordan so, Summer here, and along with me is Jonas Reyes and si Chaka Badong. Perfect attendance, ha? Huh? So, mga first time perfect attendance tayo ngayon. After <laughs> long no? while. Yeah. After a long while, and of course... Oy, last week, perfect attendance tayo, wag kayo. Oo oh, nga, oh, yeah. perfect attendance oh, yeah. din. So... But tonight, we'll have spe- a few of our special guests in our humble setup, of course. You know, two, two, two players from the same team, they're playing for the Colombian Jeep. One is, a, one is a Steph Curry lookalike, and, one is, <laughs> and another one is play, a... Play alike. <laughs> and, lookalike yeah, and play alike. Looks yeah. like play alike as well. And at the same time, Kasama Punya is one of the strongest and fittest Import. imports that we've ever seen in the PBL. Yeah. So we have Mr. Sean McCarthy. And Lester Prosper. Yay! Good evening, guys. Welcome. Yes, sir. So, you know, first and foremost, how you know, how is your stay so far? Especially for you, Lester. Uh, my stay here is great. You know, I'm, I'm finding my way around. I'm always hanging with Sean. So, you know, we um we hang out a lot. Um, go out to dinner, you know, and, and vibe. You know, that's my boy from New York. So, you know, so that's what we do. It, it makes it comfortable for me. You know, yeah. You what know, was your first impression of the Philippines? The first time you landed here? It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> humid. Hot and humid. But um, you get used to it. You know, you get really used to it. And um, the people are very friendly. Super friendly. You know, you mentioned that Sean was a big part of bringing you over here. So could you tell us both on what happened? Like, how, how did the conversation go? Like, hey, hey, Lester, come here and play for us or something. You know, Sean, maybe you could... Well, you know, I've, I've told the coaches about him for, like, even during the All Filipino Cup, I told them about him because I wanted him to join us from the beginning. But, you know, sometimes players can't have as much say as management, so mm-hmm. they, they decided to go with Kyle Barone. He's a, he's a very talented player, but... I think Lester Prosper get, uh, fits what we need better for our team. As you can see, the way he plays, he's been inside, outside, defensive presence, rebounding, and he just brings that energy that we needed. Ooh. So, Lester. I just wanted to know, I'm curious about, um, you're one of the strongest imports in the BBA. And, well, I've seen it firsthand. I've covered a couple of Colombian G. Games. Oh, Who do you think is the toughest opponent? I mean, toughest import for you to take on. The toughest import? Yes. Uh, I know the toughest local. Straight off the bat, that's uh, uh what's his name? Fajardo. Fajardo. Jun Marquardo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and Miguel. Jun yeah. stronger than my, you know, I don't know that guy. <laughs> oh, really? Who's that guy? Oh, really? <laughs> he's strong, man. He's strong, and he's cool, and he's humble. Um, toughest import? Who is the toughest import? Well, I heard about Brownlee. And Brownlee's very versatile. You know, I watch his games. He's, you know, he he's tough, but he doesn't play the same position as I. I think Charles Rhodes was pretty strong too, and explosive. You know, uh, he was good. You know, all the all the imports. You know, what I mean, um, even James Farr. Mm-hmm. James Farr was pretty good. You know, um, Jones, Terrence Jones. Was Terrence good. Jones was good. Yeah. yeah, Terrence Jones was good. Jones is um, vers- very versatile, and he he's very smart. Mm-hmm. Has a high IQ. You know, I wish he was here when we played Blackwater because. Stevenson. Oh, Stevenson. Be, Stevenson is strong. Yeah, I saw you, his You didn't get to match up with him, yeah. but he's a strong but, boy. But the too. way I, I look at people, um, like, I look at what their weaknesses are, you know? So, um, Stevenson, you have to run. You have to run Stevenson for 48 minutes. Yeah, tire him out. Yeah, tire him out. But he, I like his game also. Um, but, yeah, um, I think Charles Rhodes was, was pretty... You know, pretty explosive and strong at the same time. You know, I, I got lucky that day. <laughs> uh, I have a question for Roshan. Uh, not to take anything away from Kyle Barone, right? Uh, but what would have happened if it was Lester, who was your first, uh, who, if he was your first import? Uh, would, uh, would have a change your campaign in the Commissioner's Cup? Yeah, I think it would have turned out a little different for us. We had a few close games with Kyle that we could have won. 
few minor mistakes, but uh, I know if Lester was there from the beginning, yeah. like how Kyle was, building the chemistry, just learning the system. He had to come in in the middle of the season, so yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah. of a tough situation to be put in, uh -huh. just thrown out there like that. But if I think he was here in the beginning of the season, we would definitely be like in a better position for the playoffs and ready to compete to make a run. Well, what's, the adjust what's the adjustment easy with uh, well, he actually, to Leicester? It was a smooth adjustment because he's such a hard worker and he he's like a, he's very willing to learn. So it's easy easy to adjust when you got people like that. And, um, the thing about it, I came I came right off the the plane mm -hmm. and I didn't take any practices off. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, yeah, I, I came right from the plane right into the three man weave we were doing right into practice right into the plays mm -hmm. and and um, we didn't get any time off. We just I had to do it because of right the, into the fire, yeah, thrown right into the fire because <laughs> yeah. of the, the um, jet lag. So you know, and, and the thing about it too is like when when you have a, a teammate that vouch vouch for you. You know, um, his name is on the line. You know, his credibility is on the line. So, you know, and then on top of that, the coaching staff, you know, they, they believed in me. You know, um, they let me do my, my work. So, you know, um, I came in and I just felt comfortable. So I'm just going to play, you know. And um, as the, as a couple of games um, went on, you know, I just um, opened up. So speaking of, you know, the first impression of the Philippines is hot, right? And one of your memorable moments was in playing in Batangas, and it was really hot right there. So could you tell us both on how was your experience right there, you know, oh sleeping all over and being humid? <laughs> like, like every dead ball, I was running to the sideline for a towel just to wipe my hands, my legs. My whole jersey was soaked. If y'all could have felt my jersey, like, throughout the game, it was, like, completely soaked. Like, they didn't have no AC. They just had, like... A couple big, big fans, fans yeah. in each corner of the gym. <laughs> and the commissioner wanted to stop the game. Yeah, at he was going to stop yeah. the game. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if y'all remember when I made my shot, the, the, the one to send it to overtime. I got up and slipped right on my wet spot yeah, right after. A wet jumper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wet jumper. Flash. I told you I was doing step three. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was one of the most exciting shots I have yeah, seen yeah, yeah. in my career, period. You know, a lot, that was that was uh, everybody went crazy in that gym. But Tongas, I'm not gonna lie, they fixed the AC over there. It will be a great gym to play in because everyone comes out. Yeah, the energy was. You crazy. know, the energy was great. You know, I loved it. You know, um, but the the floors were slippery. You know, um, it, it, it was the uh, I needed an oxygen tank in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was ridiculous. Yeah, but, um, yeah, but other than that, um, I love Batangas. So the energy over there was great. They just need to fix the AC. Shout out to Batangas. Fix your AC. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, when Sean made that shot, actually, one of our friends was the was the court announcer, Noel Zarate. And he was saying, and we were always teasing him that whenever Noel Zarate is the court announcer, it always goes to overtime. So <laughs> when Sean made that shot, he was like saying, oh my God, we're yeah. going to go to overtime. It's so hot in here, we just want to go home. <laughs> but Sean made that shot Five anyway. more minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so it's a, it's a great thing, actually. All right. Beyond Batangas and the air condition not fixed in, in the gym, what is there to love about the Philippines? Um... I think everything, other than like you know, you see the the sad things, of course. You know, in the Philippines, you know, it's not all rum and raisins. You know, but um, that's everywhere in the world. You know, but um, I, I love I love the energy of the people. They're friendly. You know, um, of course, like we're PBA players, so a lot of the the younger um, players and and the fans look up to us and all that. So. Like I was telling Sean, like it, it feels good to feel appreciated with the work that you put in, and you come out there and you give a hundred percent. Because if you even take a look at when we, when I got here, you know, we're playing these games, and these games are going into overtime, or we're losing by two, or we're losing by six, you know, because of just little mistakes, and then we getting it, we, we got it together, you know. But um, I think it's just the energy of the people; they're friendly and, and cool, you know, like. That, that, that's what I noticed. Like that's like the number two thing, of, other than the weather. You know about the Philippines. People are friendly and people are cool. You know. You played almost uh, all around the world, being uh, an import. Uh, did you have to tweak your game upon arriving in here in the Philippines, playing for Colombian? Yeah, I I, I tweak my game into like um, 
basically like they want me to be aggressive. I gotta be aggressive, you know. Like at the end of the day, this is why they brought me in to be aggressive. And and the more aggressive that I am, it opens up for uh, my players, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. So now Sean will have like Sean feeds me the ball a lot, so he will have like 14 assists, 17 assists. And, <laughs> you know, so he'll, he'll just come like and keep going. Yeah, and then it'll open up for CJ. CJ go off. And, you know, if once once all three is clicking and everybody else just fall into line, it's just, it gets it's, it's, watch, it's, it's hard to stop us. Like really, it is. It really is. You know, um, that's why I say like if, if I was here from the beginning, which is. You know, it's okay because now we have we have that chemistry and we have things to work on um, before I come back. You know, and we'll get it. We'll get it going. You know. Now speaking of CJ, of course, you mentioned how that great he is. Guy. That that he's the fastest you know, man. I you you never heard of him actually. Yeah, the man child. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of CJ, of course, man Sean, child. you played you know longer than him than with Leicester. So how is it like going up and going up with? You know, a guy like CJ Perez. How's he? How's he like in practice? How's yeah. he like in games? Could you oh, tell man. Some high, high motor he, like, guy. CJ yeah. is the same way in the game and yeah. the practice. He's going like he's got his motor. He got a motor. Like yeah. he That's goes really hard in practice. He don't take practices off. Actually, he been taking it easy because he been doing the Gilas, mm -hmm. the Gilas team. So they, the coaches allow him to rest, but he don't want to rest. He goes hard in practice, and I, I respect it. He's really a beast. <laughs> He, Are you sure I don't he's even, not an energizer bunny? He's he's the energizer bunny. <laughs> Actually, it might be him though, because he wake in the morning. He wait. He walks in the gym and he, he starts talking right away. Like, let's go, guys. Let's do it. You just hear his voice, and it just it just brings more energy to everyone. Everyone's just laughing, making jokes when once he comes in. But yeah, CJ, he's relentless, man. And that's one thing about him. He's really relentless, and I love his work ethic. How about you, Lester? What can you say about CJ? Um, CJ's funny, you know. Oh, he's a funny guy, huh? Yeah, he's funny. I like. <laughs> you guys won't know, but he he is funny. And then um, on top of that, when we talk about his work ethic, um, his work ethic is up there. But his his speed and natural talent is it's crazy to it's crazy to watch, especially in, like in practice. We take it a little bit. We turn it down a little bit. But in the games is when you really see that you see CJ Perez. You know what I'm saying? You see CJ in practice, but then you see CJ Perez in the games. If that makes any sense. You know? So yeah, man, he's, he's one of the fastest. What is he? Two man? He's one of the fastest. Everything, but just yeah. play him at center. You got to. I get, I get a rebound. I'm looking down the court. CJ is down there. I'm just gonna launch it. But a lot of guys in the league are fast, yeah. you know, so you can't just launch anything because next thing you know, it's going to look crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, you end up on Shaq then. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have here, right? We don't have Shaq well, thing. Well, you guys need a, a new Shaq then. You, know, you guys Absolutely. need a, a Filipino Shaq. The Filipino version. Yeah, I see some crazy stuff happen out there. Okay, that's an idea. I'll write it down. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take note of no, that. If you've seen, you know, speaking of the shock thing moments in the Philippines, you're familiar with, you know, Mick Panisi, you know, when he the one he hit the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will McDonald. <laughs> Will McDonald. You know, the, the yeah, fun thing about it, the fun thing about this, it made. It made it to the U.S. Sports Center. Oh, really? Not, not so top 10. Not so top 10. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. What happened is he was getting physical with an import. Will McDonald. Will Petron. McDonald. Petron, yeah. Back in, it's like San Miguel Petron days. Mm. Then what happened is, you know, he, you know, he get a little too handy and all. The import was like angry at Mick Benizi. He just hit the ball in his head. Then normally when you get hit, you, you fall right away. Instantaneously, yeah. Right? Oh, Simultaneous. that's the one when it had the delayed reaction? Yeah. <laughs> yes. About, yes. You about four seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he got hit and then he's like... Two seconds. You know, from, from time to time, he covers the games, actually. Oh. He, he's retired now, actually. So, you yeah, shout out to Mick Benisi. So. Yeah. Shout out, Mick. So, Mick, in case you wanted to get on our podcast... Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Tito, Tito Mick, or we call him Lolo Mick because of his gray beard. So, uh, okay. so actually, that's that's it. You know, I mean, you know who really uh, surprised me that they're still playing. What's that guy from uh, Magnolia? Rafi Rivas. Yeah, he's in shape, man. For it's real. Like Forty, right? Probably forty-five. <laughs> 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 How about Ashi? How about Ashi? You know Ashi Taulava Ashi, from Ashi Taulava. He's from 
Oh, and Lex. And Lex. Yeah, Lex. Yeah, yeah. Lex. That's the dude. Yeah, that's the dude. I saw him. I was like, yo, how old is he? <laughs> he started being at 98, 97. It's, yeah. it's not in a bad way. It's like, yo, this guy takes care of his body. Yeah. You know, if I could play till 45, yeah. All right? He even won an MVP in the ABL. Yeah, uh, 2013. Like yeah, that's yeah. amazing, man. That's <laughs> like, amazing. I mean, can you imagine? So yeah, Asita Olava, one of the hardest working guys in the PBA. Ageless Shout out to Ageless Asi. Ageless Asi. So, yeah. so uh, right. To so, Rosho, and uh, you've been there during the rebuilding years of Colombia, and we back in the we known as Kia. Now you've got guys like CJ and uh, Jeremy King. The, the 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 record is improving, right? Uh, uh, in your opinion, what does it take for your team to finally, you know, break the ceiling? Yeah, finally, you know, maximize your potential. I think uh, we just need to keep the group of guys together. Uh-huh. Maybe, maybe a core, maybe, yeah. Maybe the core, yeah. yeah. Maybe a, another big, solid big man to help with the rebounding. But I think our guards are good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we got to keep a coach too, like. Since I've been yeah, here, we, yeah. I, we've had three coaches. I've had Coach Chris Gavina, Coach uh, Coach Ricky Dandan, and now Coach John Cardell. Uh-huh. So I think once we find like that that leader for us, uh-huh. and just stick with the core group of guys that we got, we can start to build more chemistry and and really become a team, a better mm-hmm. team, instead of having pieces moving in and out all the time. And you were part of the Sunbeam deep deep trade. I mean, he was part of San Miguel. So yeah. how was it like you know going up against you know, Chris Ross? Yeah, yeah. That's, buddies, my, that's my brother. That's yeah. like my mentor, my brother. Uh-huh. Like I was with him last night after his game. Uh-huh. It's always fun to compete against those guys. I always used to talk trash to them when I was at San Miguel on practice. Like I should be playing, <laughs> but you know I got a lot of respect for those guys, and it's always fun to compete against him, Alex, Marshall. All of those guys. Those are my guys. Those are my guys. Does it give you additional motivation when you Def- face those guys? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah, because your stats are yeah, kind of obvious. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're always like, uh, we're always talking trash to each uh-huh. other through text messages. I'm telling them like, hey, y'all better double team me or something. I, like, that's how we talk to each other. That's how we, me. Yeah, we're always talking trash to each other. But, you know, those are my guys. It's friendly competition. All right. Speaking of head coaches, were you guys aware that... Filipino boxing champion Manny Pacquiao once coached Colombian, then Kia. Yeah, I'm a, I was aware of that. I was definitely watching. You were still there, yeah? No, I wasn't there at oh, the time. Right, right. Um, I was going through the D League ranks at that time. Oh, so yeah, I was paying attention to the PBA for uh-huh. sure. And also, I used to play for Manny Pacquiao's D League team, MP Hotel Warriors. Yeah. So, oh, okay. cool. so I was always around them. Uh-huh. So. How it was about cool. you? It was cool. How about you, Mr. Have you Prosper? Have you met Pacquiao like first hand or something? Or no, yeah? I didn't meet Pacquiao. I want to meet Pacquiao. He was yeah, was supposed to be our coach. Do a few rounds. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that he was once the coach of the franchise? Player coach, actually. Yeah. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> but um, yeah. Look, you know, we um, we see Manny Pacquiao in the states, and um, I saw like a documentary on him, um, and this guy worked so hard. It's ridiculous, you know. He deserves everything that he has received, that he's receiving, and all that. So, you know, shout out to Manny Pacquiao, man. Yeah. So speaking of, you know, Sean, you you played with San Miguel, of course. You know, get, you know, how was it? You you've said that you worked under different coaches so far. You know, could you give us a little breeze through on how how each coach was like? like how are they like, like in their personality or how uh, they go about Co- the game? Coach Leo, he's my first coach in the PBA. Uh-huh. Um, you know, he's a very encouraging guy. Um, he was always telling me just be patient, just wait, wait my turn, because he knew he knew my abilities. But I got uh, great, great guys ahead of me that I, I couldn't really just walk in and take their spot, being a new guy. Mm-hmm. Because they already they were the champions before, but you know, Coach Leo, he's very meticulous, very like to pay close attention details, to details yeah. all the time. Like we would just do walkthroughs sometimes in practice, and I don't think it's uh, good to practice hard over there at San Miguel. They got a lot of old guys, so we would just do walkthroughs a lot, mm-hmm. very attention to details, and then you can see how they play. They just know know each other's spots so well, and they play so well together, those guys. And 
Coach Leo has a lot to do with it. Maybe um, love interviewing him. Man. <laughs> yeah, he's a funny guy. He's yeah. very screen. Yeah, he's very funny guy. <laughs> screen. Very funny guy off the court. <laughs> Yeah, then we Coach Chris. Coach Chris? Huh? Me and Coach Chris go way back, actually. Okay. From New York. We used to actually play together mm-hmm. in, like, tournaments throughout the city. Mm-hmm. So we were teammates before he even came over here, just, like, playing in leagues and inner-city tournaments back home in New York, mm-hmm. traveling throughout the East Coast, playing in tournaments. But he's, like, he's like <laughs> I never really looked at him like a coach because we, we played buddies. on the yeah. same team. Yeah. But he's a really hard worker. He started as a strength and conditioning coach and worked his way up to becoming a head coach, which just says a lot about his work ethic. And it showed that people respect what he does to, to start out as, as a strength and conditioning coach and then be named the head coach. He's a very hard worker. I still work out with him till this day. We do a hard wire training sometimes during the off season. So that's my guy. Uh, then now it's Ricky Dandan. Coach Ricky Dandan. Dan. Dan. Oh, coach man. He's Jungle. probably the most intense coach. Like, oh, yeah. He's a really much. intense coach. But he was really, really good with the X and O's, really good at defining player roles. And he always had, like, a plan, a system. He knew what he wanted to do, and he always – he's like an X and O's guy. Like, he's – like, every – he would go crazy in practice. Throw it, like, if someone's interrupting him, he would, like – Smack the wall like he 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 demanded respect and people gave him respect. I like that about him, and I kind of wish he stayed. He resigned. I think he resigned a little bit too early. Mm-hmm. I understand he got his commitments with UP. They got a uh, they got a championship group growing over there right now with championship aspirations. But he's he's we actually got into altercation too one time. <laughs> This is, I'm giving y'all an inside scoop. How was it? It was during a tune-up game. During a tune-up game, like, we're going, we're playing, and then he subs me out, and I'm like, damn. I didn't use those words. I used the, I, can I curse here? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> he subbed me out, and I was like, fuck. I was mad. I wanted to stay in. I just want to play and compete. Uh-huh. And then he, he thought I was directing it towards him. So then he, like, approached me, like, are you talking to me? And then he, like, kind of rushed me. I thought we were about to fight. Like, the other, <laughs> the other coaches had to hold him back. It was crazy. It was crazy. But it just shows you he's a competitor just like I'm a competitor. But we talked it out. We got over that. Yeah. I love the fire that he that he coaches with. He got a lot of passion for the game. And a while ago, you know, Lester, a while ago, we were just browsing through different spots in the Philippines. And you mentioned that you would like to, you know, to take a few few days here for vacation or something mm-hmm. you know, are there any specific places you have in mind or something uh, Coron, uh, El Nido uh, so that's about it right now El Nido and Coron that's, about so that's on top of your list yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so well so yeah I think we need to pause for a break after this <laughs> So, we need to take a breather. So when we return, we'll this have our first more step, yeah. of yeah. Rashawn McCarthy and Jesper yeah, Prosper. And of course, we're back again sa Ultimate Fan Hub Podcast, where it's made by the fans for, for the, the fans. fans. Pala natin, this is episode 13, right? <laughs> 13? 14. 13. <laughs> sure. perfect din natin yun. We get that one. We uh, always lost yeah. count. Okay. Actually, oh, we always lost count. Once again, we're here with Lester Prosper and Sean McCarthy. And of course, our favorite part of the podcast. Yes. Shout, shout out. Shout so, out. So, we'll give take the floor away. to you know, Lester our first guests. or Sean. Yeah. So. I would like to shout out all my teammates. You know, um, shout out my guy back in um, Miami. Yes. Shout out um, Sean, of course. You know what I mean? Shout out to. Yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> shout, shout out to my beautiful wife back home. You know, um, Shout out to my dogs and my five cats. Wow, wow five cats. Yeah, yeah, I love cats. I might get another one. You know, um, shout out to everybody that I train with that helped me get prepared. Um, my, my trainer, King. Um, my other trainer from Premier Workouts. Um, Taylor Sports Group. Shout out to all those guys that um, always have me in the mix so I can get better and, and improve on my game. And, and um, shout out to Fast Twitch. That's it. That's about it. How about you? Oh yeah! Shout out to shout out to the young group, T 
to Young Magic. Shout out. That's my guy. I just want to give a shout out to my peoples back in New York. Some of my peoples in Cavite. Um, my guy, Coach Drew Fundamentals. Shout out PBM Basketball in New York. Um, continue to hold it down. Long Island, Old Westbury. <laughs> we good. Yo, Sicha, bro. Sicha, shout out, time. Uh, first of all, hi to Sir Fidel Mangonon of uh, yeah, PA like Press Corps. The, the PBOlogist, Yeah, the PBOlogist. Yeah. Thank you for being so nice to me yesterday. Kahit na medyo may intriguing question. Um, Sir Ernest, hi. Um, Sir Ray Hoble, thank you for... Um, Paving the way for me to know Sir to Fidel. Meeting the bibliologist. Yes, yeah. it's, su- it's such an honor. Also, hi to the Pasay Voyagers. You guys will bounce back, I know. And who else? Hi to my Ate Abby. Um, and to the to my fellow writers at Dog Out Philippines. Oh, yeah. Yes, the you guys rock. <laughs> and yeah, yun lang. <laughs> I oh good luck North for tomorrow. Oh, 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 oh. He, he's actually rooting for North right now. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know, they have this hashtag, you know, we the North Port, you know, like if they think of Raptors and we the North Port. <laughs> it's a brainchild of Nico Elord, actually. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just want to greet my wife and my two kids at home, then uh, our co-writers from Fox Sports Philippines, then my friends from uh, Kings of the Port, then uh, team namin, MPBL, the Mindoro Tamaraus. Wow! Yes. Sir, Sir Justin Tai, yeah. Si BM, ano, Mikan Liachon, and all the guys running the page. Then, uh, my friends from uh, Elorde Ortigas and my friends from DCCD. I wait lang. Yeah. Hi to Coach Louie Alas and Tita Lisa. Ayun. Okay. How about you, Coach Jordan? Yeah, just want to say shout out, of course, to our listeners dito sa podcast. So, thank you ulit sa pag-supporta, of course, to our family. To my, yeah, to my girlfriend, of course, Bianca. Thank you to picture, man. Yeah, just exactly. Yeah. To our friends, of course, sila, you know, Christian, Louie, Howard, uh, Joffrey, Lloyd, you know, tsaka yung mga girlfriend din, of course. Tapos, yun ba ba? Um, yun, mga kapwa, mga kapwa natin kapwa sa media. Writers. Kapwa writers. sa Fox and for other outlets sa uh, Manila uh-huh. Putin. Sila, yun, sila Brian, si Ernest, sila LBJ. <laughs> I uh, forgot uh, my classmates from the Bill Velasco Broadcasting Workshop. Yon, isa pa yon. So, of course, classmates, guys, also. classmates din sa newbies workshop ni, ni Sir Noel. So, yun ka, may mga workshops po tayong abangan. August 2 to 4 kay Sir Noel and September, September yeah. for, for Sir Bill, Bill Velasco. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. And of course, right, moving forward. You know, moving forward, you know, Lester, you mentioned that you've trained with some of some of you know top talents back home in the states. So could you tell us extensively or who, some of the guys you work with? You know, guys, NBA players, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I trained with um James Johnson. Oh, awesome. Um, trained with Amari Stadamaya. With um, shout out to Taylor Sports Group with that. Um, I trained with John Wall. Shout out to Remy Workouts. Everybody else that I um that. That's up there that I train with, like um, who else did I train with? I got UD. UD. That's that's Remy workouts. Everybody that I train with is mostly yeah. from the the Remy workouts um, yeah. crew. You know, so shout out to Remy workouts for, for for keeping me in the loop with um with all those guys and helping me to improve on my game and, and, and giving me some serious advice. Yeah, you even work out with you know Bulkman, right? He's a household name here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bulkman. Bulk, yeah, Bulkman's a beast. You know, um, Bulkman he got a lot of energy. And then you know, this guy, and he's like, he's like Sean Livingston, right? Joe and Johnson, I, I saw Joe. Yeah, he even <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I saw Joe and Sean. Yeah, Lee. that's Taylor Taylor Sports Group. They uh-huh. um they called me in to work out with the Houston Rockets. So shout out to Taylor Sports Group for that also. And the beard, yeah. James Harden. That's Taylor Sports Group also yeah. with James Harden. Dennis the Rodman, pangal. You know, this one, uh, the worm. Yeah. Who else we got there? You got uh, Dennis Rodman. You Jordan Joel Anthony. Oh, that's Joel Anthony. Anthony. Shout yeah. out to Joel Anthony. He's like my brother, man. Like, yeah. like you know, what I'm Haslam. You don't as Haslam. He's a beast. Yeah. You know, OG. Um, that's Livingston. You know, Bulkman. Yeah. You know, John Wall. You know, what I mean, I, I text John Wall like 
during my season in England, I told him, man, just have a, um, a fast, wishing him a fast recovery. Dwayne Wade, all the Wade, flash. Flash. <laughs> Yeah, D Wade, D Wade's cool, it's man. Three hundred five. His father is cool too. Humble guy. D Wade's humble. You know, his father's humble. You know, good guys. How how was it like working with these guys? Of course. Well, you know what it was. It wasn't really like working with them. It was I worked with both. It was more like we're actually in competition. Mm -hmm. Like we're going up and down. So you see why these guys are pros. You know, by the way, they know the game, the position, and uh, their skill set. You know, they these guys are <laughs> these guys are pros. You know, so um, it, you had to really keep your game at a high level and playing like that prepared me for this and and prepared me for the BBL and you know a lot of people say the BBL is not a strong league but the BBL is actually a lot of people could go to the BBL and they, you're not going to score easy there you know it's athletic it's strong you know but um, it prepared me for here also when you have to you have to try to, to um, carry a team and be aggressive and, and, and because uh, everybody knows the PBA you know, it's very like if you don't perform, you know, the next guy will be right there on the bench, like waiting. Hey, what's up, man? See you later. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, <laughs> like, like you, you'll be here one day. You'll be, you'll be like, hey, man, you were just in the Philippines. Yeah, <laughs> and I know, man. I'm back now. <laughs> you know, but that's that's I, I feel that's because you know you didn't prepare yourself, you know, to you know to, to be able to play against PBA players the PBA is physical mm -hmm. you know it's physical and these guys here are smart you know what I mean and, and and for the most part they play hard every team that I played against they play hard mm -hmm. you know and that's why I love the PBA you know what I'm saying I told Sean man thank you for bringing me here I love the PBA <laughs> you told me that about a hundred times you know what I mean <laughs> because it, you know and then you have you have an organization that's you know that want want to do like everything to make you comfortable you know, like like my guy Willie. You know, like Willie, Willie. Less anything you need, boom, 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 anything that I need. You know, they're right there. So I'm in the gym. I go out and shoot 200 shots a day. He's rebounding for me. I know he's tired, but damn, I gotta do it as well. You know, so he's rebounding with me with no shoes on. You know, what I mean? he's on the hardcore, and that's the best thing about it, man. It's just the work that I put in every single day. You know, so I go from the I go from practice in the morning, then after practice I rest, and then I call Willie up. We go into the gym, we shoot, we do right hooks, left hooks. You know, um, shoot three, shoot mid range. Then we call it a day. You know, um, then sometimes I work on my handle with Sean. You know, just try to improve on every aspect of my game, not be one dimensional. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I go lift some weights. You know, and then I come back and I shoot again because you can't just lift weights and then not shoot because you gotta you gotta make sure your 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 shot is stay up to par. The muscle memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's that's what I do, and then that's why I come into practice on time next day. But it's all right. You know, I'm young. I'm 30 years old. I'm young. <laughs> what's difficult in being an import when play, playing in different countries? What, what's the difficult? I, I don't I don't think it's difficult. Uh -huh. you know, oh, okay. Because it's all about preparation. You know, so if somebody's paying you to play basketball, uh -huh. do your fucking job. You know what I'm saying? Do your job. You know what I'm saying? If the coach wants this from you, do that mm -hmm. and more. You know what I mean? So that's that's what it's all about. That I take this personally, man. You know why I take it personally? Because he's been telling them about me for months. You know what I mean? And I've been trying to get to the PBA. This is how hard the PBA is to get into. I've been trying to get into the PBA for a while. You know, um, even Bulkman talked to, um, they had an agent here, Cheryl, yeah. you know, um, rest in peace, you yeah. know, and, and, you know, like she, she, she would say, yeah, 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 but I didn't have that NBA resume, you know, it's not her fault that I'm not here, I just didn't have the NBA resume that's colorful that she was looking for, mm -hmm. you know, and as an agent, I understand that, you know, it's a business, mm -hmm. you know, but I got my opportunity, you know, and to have it now, and look what I'm doing. You know, it doesn't matter what school you go to. Mm -hmm. It's about the work you put in. You know, and I'm here to to set the the tone for mm -hmm. that. You know, because you know, you, you may have a guy that played in the NBA, uh -huh. but he comes here and he just takes your money. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And, and don't produce and make the most out and of just, the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't make the most uh -huh. out of the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Because he's been in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? Like look, look at look at Terrence Jones. He come here and he's playing hard. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He's playing hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm talking about. And that guy has an extensive NBA resume, and he's here yeah. playing hard. He's going back to the league next year. I guarantee you that. Because he, okay. he, he took this seriously. This is not a joke league. This is serious. That's why I love the PBA. Shout out to the PBA. 
Good. <laughs> Uh, how, what about you, Sean? Um, how, how, how do you feel that um, your buddy right here is doing so well in, in the PBA, that he loved being here? Uh, Bringing him in was all the worst. I'm really, I'm really happy for him, man. He's taking advantage of the opportunities, and I'm sure it's going to open up more doors for him. And he's, he's not taking no days off. Like, I keep telling him, bro, take a rest. <laughs> He's like, no, nah, I'm going to go get shots up. I'm going to the weight room. Like, he's passionate about it. And that's the one thing I was always telling the coaches more than anything. They were, they were, they were like, worried about his skill set. I'm like, don't worry about that. He's a real hard worker, and he's going to give you everything he got. And you see, you see it's, it's, it's showing. It's showing in the way he plays. And now we got, got some wins. We've been in close games. Like, it was a good – he's, he's taking full advantage of his opportunity, and I'm super happy for him. Um, Roshan, you were you were you were part of uh, the trade in 2017, right? Uh, you were from San Miguel. Uh, in order for them to get the number one draft pick, which turned out to be Christian Stein Hardinger, they had to trade you away with uh, Ronald Dubit and yeah. J.R. Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you first heard it, uh, let let's go go back to that day when you first heard it. How did you feel? Uh, so I literally just landed in New York. Oh, I was yeah. still on the plane, uh -huh. and then the team manager called me. I was still <laughs> on the plane. Like, I just turned, took the phone off for airplane mode, mode, yeah. and the phone started ringing. Uh -huh. And I already kind of had an idea. Like, why, I'm like, why is the manager calling, calling me? you? Yeah. Yep. And then they said, hey, we traded you. Uh, at first, I was a little disappointed just because uh -huh. I built a relationship with those guys. Yeah, and you and won we, titles with them. Yeah, yeah so, we yeah. won titles. Uh -huh. I was just waiting for my turn there, <laughs> but it didn't happen like that. But it was okay because Kia Colombian Jeep gave me the opportunity to show show the PBA what I can do and what I bring to the table. Which I, which um, like Lester took advantage of this opportunity. I felt like I've been taking advantage of my opportunity once I got the playing time on the court, mm -hmm. and they put put the ball in my hands to lead the team. And mm -hmm. I felt like I've been showing what I can do and. It's, it's a good, it's, it was great for me. Even though we haven't made playoffs or won championships, uh -huh. I feel like it's a great, great experience for me to get and be able to try to lead my own team. How was the adjustment? Uh, playing behind guys like Alex Cabagnot, Chris Ross. When you came to Colombia and you became a starter right away, off, right off the bat, how was the adjustment? Uh, I felt like I was prepared for it just because of uh -huh. the way, because I would always train with them. Chris, Alex, Marshall, we would always train even after practice together. And they were always in my ear, like, when I got traded, they're like, hey, now's your chance, man. Show them what you can do. We believe in you, too. Like, they were cheering you on. Yeah, yeah, even still to this day, those uh -huh. guys are always telling me, like, hey, you got to be more aggressive some games. Like, so um, I was just real happy for the opportunity, man. And I'm glad it, I'm glad it happened. I'm glad it happened. You know, Sean, you of course, a big part of you coming together. You know, you're from New York. I think you're from Miami, right? I'm from New York also, New but York. I, I live in Miami. So, how did you two link up? Like, were you teammates in school or something? Uh, okay, so, we both went to Old Westbury, SUNY Old Westbury. We both attended that. That's our alma mater. But he, when he was a senior leaving, I was coming in, at, coming in as a transfer student. Okay. So... We didn't actually get to play together in the games, but we would play together in open gyms, just pick up basketball, oh, yeah. and that's how that's how I got to know of Lester. But I knew of him already because I used to, I was already planning of transferring to the school. You knew of me? I was the man. <laughs> <laughs> he was the man. He was on Sports Center actually. Okay. He put that team on the map because he had like a triple double with blocks, uh -huh. and I'm like, who's this guy? Uh -huh. And then and then I went to the open gym and I seen what it was all about. Same way, talking, talking up a storm, trying to dribble the ball up the court, uh -huh. <laughs> shooting three, same way. I'm like, who is this guy, man? My three-point shot now is actually ten times better. Ten times better. Ten times better than ten I was shooting better. the ball up the backboard. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, but we didn't actually play play college together, but we went to the same college. Just You guys didn't know that Sean was super, super explosive. Oh, man. Yeah. Got, a few yeah. years back, y'all didn't get to, y'all didn't get to yeah, see that. Didn't get to see the I leg. lost my one leg jump a little bit. I caught Jeez. a couple dunks in the PBA, but was, before, I was going through the legs on windmills. It's not the same. <laughs> Father Tom is undefeated. 
No, I've even seen you doing some dirt legs from time to time, you know? You really work on your jump shot. Yeah, yeah, I work on my jump shot a lot. He challenges the coaches every day in practice. Yep, yes, I do. <laughs> I beat them all the time. <laughs> every day in every practice. Every day. I even challenge the shooters, except Sean. He didn't step up to the mat yet, but, you know, we're going to... He we're can't gonna, shoot from my range yet. He's shooting from half court. I'm like, all right, buddy. <laughs> you're trying to CJ. This is, this is my excuse when he's shooting from half court. You don't need to do that. You don't do that in the game. <laughs> you know, that's my excuse. You don't do that you in the never game. Never know. <laughs> like yeah. doing like a lamello, like with a tip off, you just yeah. point right there. <laughs> and just throw it off. Uh, they might sub me out if I do that <laughs> right away. Uh, a question for Roshan. Uh, toughest guy to uh, guarding in the PBA? I think your toughest match. Stanley yeah. Pringle. Stanley Pringle, He yeah. scored 50 against us one game. I don't uh -huh. know if you remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro, Stanley scored 50 on us. Uh -huh. You know, he's so strong and he's changed, changed direction so quick. And then when if he gets his shot going too, he's, he's, he's real hard to guard. He's one of the toughest guys. Um, who else is tough to guard? Alex Cabagna. He's so, he yes. just, yeah, he's crafty. He's crafty. Yeah. He got the footwork. He knows when to grab you. He knows when to throw the little elbows. <laughs> he knows when to pump fakes. He's real. He doesn't throw elbows. Yeah, you can't see it. <laughs> you, you can't see it. I can feel it, though. Come back now. He knows how to do it and get away with it. He's, he's good, man. He's tough. Uh, Who else is tough to guard? You know, I hate chasing around the small guys. <laughs> Even Roy Suma, he's real quick. Uh -huh. I hate chasing. Oh, Castro. Jason yeah, Jason Castro's real quick. He's hard to stay in front of. You gotta really like. Yeah. You can't guard him by yourself. You need your team to be to be there for you, watch your back. I, I, you know who I like. You know, he's not a guard, but he um, he finds his positions, and that's how he scores. Um, the, the kid, um, the guy from uh, Magnolia. Uh, what's his name? Sangalan. Sangalan. Sangala. Yeah. 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 This guy, like, yeah, he's not athletic. He's yeah, not yeah, athletic, good, yeah. but he will. He's like right there. He's always in the mix. Maybe it's because of the footwork. Yeah, yeah I like him, man. I really like him. And, and I like Nabo. Kelly um, Nabo. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he makes me laugh, man. This guy, he, his energy is like, I feel it, you know? <laughs> like, I feel it, man. If he could control it, he would, it. Yeah, he would be so dangerous, man. The excess Tell energy. Me, man. He's good, he got ruled out last night. Yeah, he got ejected but I'm, last night. I'm saying if he could control it. Uh -huh. That energy is is important. If you could control that energy and, and, and like use it towards um, being productive and not getting technicals, he's dangerous. You know, I like his energy. You know, if, if, if they don't want him over there at San Miguel, you guys just send him over here at Columbia. Uh, you can use him. You know, I like him a lot. Shout out to Nabo. Nabo. <laughs> uh, do you think PBA teams are putting too much pressure on imports? Because uh, if, what happens in the PBA is if you lose by like two or three games, even if your import is averaging like a 30-20, they replace the imports yeah. right away. Yeah, is, I, is there too much pressure I, I on think, imports? I think sometimes it is like, sometimes you gotta, um, this, this is what my, you know, um, the, the, what I think basically. Um, you, you're, you're a professional basketball player, you know, um, and, and, and it's a professional organization. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is, um, before you bring in a, a player, you, you scout that player, you know, and um, and, and, and people like to play um, under situations that they, they feel comfortable, all depending on your personality, mm -hmm. you know. But mm -hmm. like I said, it's all about the work that you put in. You have to trust your work. You have to, you know, trust your process. But at the same time, you know, you might not have... Um, uh, a good surrounding around you as an import. You might not have um, maybe imports, maybe locals on the other team are better than locals on your team. So sometimes you, it's all about what the organization wants. Like if the organization feel that they have solid um, locals and your numbers are solid but it's not turning out to any win, then sometimes it does call for a change, you know? But, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think two two games in, like, uh, sometimes it all depends. If, if you feel that you you are an organization. If I'm paying you and I feel like I could pay somebody else because this guy has exactly what we need, mm -hmm. then, you know, you pay that guy his money. You tell him thank you for, you know, your time and boom. At the end of the day, everybody gets paid. But, you know, I feel like, I just feel like it's, um, as an organization, you just got to make the right um, pick. 
because then you got to pay for flight tickets and mm -hmm. all of that, and, and it's just it's, it's crazy, you know. It makes people career looks crazy, also, you know. Like, uh -huh. oh, you're here for one game, you know, that looks crazy, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, um, that's how I feel. I just feel it's more of like an organization thing and, and being able to uh, see talent. Um, you're down to playing your last game in the Sunday, uh, yeah. Commissioner's Sunday. Cup. What? For, this question goes for you guys. What's your most memorable game in the so Commissioner's far. so far? So far? Yeah. It's gotta be the SMB game. He had 40 points. I had 27 and 14. CJ had 34. It was an overtime game. Yeah. Arwen hit that crazy shot against us. And uh, other guys stepped up. It wasn't just me, him, and CJ. Glenn hit some big shots that game. I think that was the most memorable game. Yeah. And it was like the crowd was into it. It was it was real fun. It was a lot of fun to play in that I, game. I'm not going to lie. I, I love that game, too. Um, actually, I love the game that we, we, played, we just played the last game. Phoenix? Yeah. I, I like that game, too, because um, of the block at the end. Oh, yeah. Glenn. Ooh, Glenn. Then, block. And yeah. Then chase Shel down. Shelter hits down. that. Yeah. Um, Shelter hits that floater. You know, that's when you know the energy is shifting. Yeah, you know, the guys, stepping guys up. are stepping up. Guys, guys have winning attitudes. Mm -hmm. The energy is shifting. I'm telling you, like in a year, Colombia is gonna be, it's gonna be a team to, to really mess with. You know, and, and the thing about it, we we're not even at our best yet. You know what I'm saying? That's the crazy yeah. A lot of guys are hurt. Yeah, that's that's the crazy thing. We're not even at our best. So. Yeah, so for speaking of uh, Colombian team, um, you know you have so you have you know you have experience you know working with coaches, you know, Coach John, John and you know, Coach Emery, those guys. You know, how is it like working with them? You know, what's in a typical day of practice for Colombian team? Well, well, this this is my typical day of practice. I can only speak for myself. I come in. I have Janet and Willie. Can you guys give me my pancakes? Some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And then, um, then we we, um, we start shooting, start shooting, start warming up, start stretching, and then um, three men weave. You know, it, it starts getting a little intense after that. Uh -huh. After the pancakes go down, it gets intense. <laughs> yep. Fueled by pancakes. Yep. <laughs> fueled by pancakes. So Mr. Prosper is always fueled, fueled by, by pancakes. pancakes. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm he loves my it. <laughs> you're, you're, you're getting it from Pancake House or any specific? No, um, no they, they got I, catering I, I there. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, they got catering there. Uh -huh. Breakfast for us every day. Mm -hmm. Okay, pancakes, huh? Yeah, yeah. So that pancakes up for me. You eating pancakes for dinner too? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I have it for dinner too because I don't feel like eating anything else. But the thing about it, don't get it twisted. I work out ten times as much, so those pancakes never really show. <laughs> you know, thank God. <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, Lord have mercy. I'll be walking around here looking like Willie. <laughs> <laughs> in in 20, uh, the next year's uh, Commissioner's Cup, uh, Roshan calls you again. Hey man, uh, we, need can you. we need you back. What will you? Uh, what, how will you reply? I'm sleeping, man. Leave me alone, man. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'll be back. I'll probably be here before he even called. <laughs> you know, I'll probably be calling him like, yo, I'm over here. Where you at? You know? Oh, there will always be a chance for you to come back here and play. Of course, of course. You know, like the way I play, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be here for a while. You know, I'm going to be here till the end of my career just because of the way I play. You know, like I'm, I'm passionate. I think Filipinos are passionate and they mm -hmm. want other people to be um, passionate, especially an owner or something. If they, they're paying you in an organization, and they're paying you to be passionate. They give me everything. You know, I got a condo, I got a, a gym that I'm there every day. I got Willie to drive me around anywhere I want to go. You know, that's fine with me. You know, like I'm not asking for anything extra, you know, but just, um, just, just, just show loyalty. You know, organizations need to start showing loyalty. And, and look at Rainer Shine with um, Denzel Bowles. You know, he got hurt and they still have him here. Yeah. That's loyalty. You know, people want to play for organizations like that. You know, you just don't cut somebody in two games because they're not doing so yeah, well. Yeah. But at the same time, too, it all depends on how uh, hard that person is working. You know, if you feel that person just likes baseball not being a good teammate, then, you know, there's repercussions to not doing these things. You know, and 
it's all about passion. You come over and you play back. Look at um, what's his name from Rain or Shine last night. He's not like the Carl most. Montgomery. Yeah, he's not the most. Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg, yeah. Snoop Dogg. Yeah. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's not, he's not the most skilled guy, but he's very hardworking. Last night, I saw him, and I'm like, okay. And then, but he's very hardworking. The guy from um, Blackwater. You know, Blair? Yeah. That you got? Yeah, he's yeah, not very... Right. Stephon Blair. Stephon you know, yeah. Blair. Yeah. I, feel, I feel with him, he just needs to work more on skills and open up his game because he's very strong. And I feel that he will be successful in another um, system. Mm-hmm. You know, like probably a European system. Because the Filipino basketball system is not built for everybody. If you're going to come here, you got to be a legit scorer. you got to know how to score. You know, sometimes you can't wait. Like even with Stevenson, who they had. He scored. Mm-hmm. He scored off rebounds and put that team. You know, and then he'll post you up and see, you know, like. High person, big yeah, shots, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's different. Look at, um, what's his name? Tartoa. You know, he. Mo, his, big, big move. move. Big move game went from like this to like up here. You know, he's shooting the ball well. Uh-huh. You know, everybody. It's a scoring league. You got to be able to score. You got to have skills, you know, like, and, and if you don't have skills, just work on it. You have the opportunity to just work on it every day. That's what I do with the coaching staff. I work on my stuff every day, you know? Like, I work on it every day. Those guys work me out every single day. You know, it's funny, you know, Mo, you know, Big Mo didn't have a jump shot about this. Yeah, well, but now he's training three. He's got a jump shot now. He's <laughs> kind of crazy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> think about it. All right, so let's take, um, let's give them a lighter question right now. Huh. Okay. Filipinos love to eat. So what is your the question goes for the both of them. Both, both guys, yeah. What's your favorite Filipino food? Or have you tried anything? Yeah, I like adobo. Same. I love chicken adobo, of yeah. course. Tinola Manok, of course, Sinigang. Pan said, I love all the Filipino food. This is so good. <laughs> Did you give him an introduction of Filipino food before he uh, went here? No, not before he got here, but that's all he's been eating since he got here. Because they, <laughs> they prepare the food for us at practice every day. And it's either like uh, uh, beef caldereta. Yeah, cook, we cook meals after practice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I beef come down here and have my Mediterranean too. You know, I got to have my little uh, yeah, well, I took him to a few restaurants in uh-huh. BGC too for him to try. But um, the chicken adobo is great. Um, what's what's the... Um, the, the eggplant, the eggplant, the fried eggplant. Oh, yeah, the Sorry, fried eggplant. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So long in the morning, yeah. That was good right there. And then Filipino pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Two pancakes and adobo. <laughs> you know, when Lamar Odom came here, like, last February, he was saying the same thing, you know, I like oh. chicken adobo. Yeah, yeah. How do you guys do it? <laughs> yeah. And then... Uh, the new import of SMB, Chris McCullough, likes chicken, joy. likes chicken joy. Have you tried chicken joy? Jollibee. I was From telling Jollibee. him about it actually yeah. on the way here. It's like KFC. We might pick nope. up a bucket. No, before. nope. You, have, you haven't nope. been to the Philippines if you haven't tried Jollibee. Shit, I'm Jollibee. I'm a pass that bitch every day. You, you can yeah. shelve your KFC for you can tell your the guy Jollibee. Bring it to Jollibee. Bring that Jollibee on the way home. <laughs> All right, man. Take me to Jollibee. Oh, okay. Order like a bucket for yourself. Man. Yes. I'm gonna fry chicken. I'm coming to practice. Like my knees hurt. My hurt. everything hurt. Uh, another, another light question. Uh, who were your basketball influences growing up? Um, well, I like I like Udonis Haslam. I like Chris Bosh. That's definitely like CB4. Yeah, number one. Um, I like Amari Stoudemire. Um, and I like Sean Kemp. Oh, the Rain Man. Yeah, the Rain Man. You know, um, I like the Kemby Mutombo. You know, he's blocking a lot of shots. That's why I actually used to follow a lot try to try to emulate you know um, and until I get my offensive game right <laughs> then I just uh, everybody now pump fakes like crazy I just stand up <laughs> you know um, and I love Carmelo and, and I love LeBron those are the guys how about you Roshan your basketball yeah. influences growing up I was a big AI fan. Oof, He's probably answer. my favorite, yeah. favorite, one of my favorite all-time players. Me too, man. Yeah. Um, Penny Hardaway is one of my favorite players of all time. Of course, you got Jordan there. You know, I was kind of, I used to hate Kobe because he was so good. I used to hate him. <laughs> he destroyed my one of my other favorite point guards of all time, Jason Kidd. 
Yeah. I used to love Nets, him when he was Nets, on the yeah. Nets. Oh, my God. Brandon Roy, man. I wish his knees oh, would have yeah. stayed right. I love that. Brandon Roy, Tracy McGrady. Um, How about the new guys, of course, Stephen Curry. Yeah, Kemba, you look Kemba. You look alike. <laughs> you play like him, so. I hear that a lot. <laughs> Kemba Walker is one of my favorite players, too. He's from New York. Really small guard, quick guard. Yeah, the funny thing about Kemba Walker, you know, he's not, he's back in the Celtics, so you know those old Celtics fans with the uh, Antoine Walker jerseys, they can bring it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he wearing wearing <laughs> he's wearing number eight. He's wearing number eight now. Yeah, he's wearing number eight. Oh, okay, so. that's dope. No, what do you think about Zion? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your that's thoughts what, on Zion? You know, on, yeah. and, you know, on the draft picks, you know, just a little the hype, bit of the yeah. NBA. Yeah. I think he's gonna be real good, but he's he still got to work on his fundamentals, his. Uh, and his shooting, because he's so strong, he's so athletic, but you can't do A lot of people strong and athletic in the NBA, so he got to work on that jump shot. It'll help open up the rest of his game. But he's more than just a dunker, man. He's good. He could pass. He could he could dribble. I think he's going to have a great career. I think... Um, yeah, you're, he's a lefty too, yeah? like you, man. I don't know. I don't study Zion, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just not trying to get in his way. <laughs> But the thing about him, I think in the system that um, the pickups that the Pelicans have right now, I think it'll work out for him because um, Lonzo Ball is such an amazing passer. You have Brandon Ingram, such a you good scorer. Holiday, too. You got yeah. Drew Holiday, amazing scorer, amazing basketball player. They got um, some solid cuts Yeah, you, they, they have... They J.J. Have, Redick, you know, Favors. It's going to be... I think, I think they could sneak into the playoffs, if you ask me. You know, they get the chemistry going right, they could sneak into the playoffs. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see. If there's a chance for you to teach young talents to play basketball here in the Philippines, would you grab the opportunity? Oh yeah, of course. You know, uh, I was actually talking to you about that. Yeah. You know, um, just going going into the rural neighborhoods. Basketball clinics. Yeah, yeah. It's not even clinics, just showing up. Okay. Just walking in there, you know, just having having a few guys with me, of course. You know, and I'm going in there and and vibing with the kids, vibing with the community, you know, and play ball, you know. And, um, and just, if I see something, you know, everybody's different. So I'll take Sean with me because he's a guard, and if I see some bigs down there, you know, I'll, I'll try to help them out and help them vibe and take pictures with them and let them know that, you know, you could go from here to the PBA because, you know, it's <clears throat> you're here. You work hard on your time. Somebody's going to find you. you know? and that's, that's just what I, I, I think about that. You know, plus, you know, I grew up, I, I grew up, um, you know, basketball's not my first sport, you know. So my What's first sport? Cricket. Okay. Yeah, cricket's my first sport. So I started playing basketball in college, you know, and um, that's why I think, like, it's, it's you, get, you, you go to a neighborhood here and you, you teach kids basketball and they, they grow up and they, they come out here and they practice, you know. I think it's amazing to do that, to see the growth of people, you know. They're humans at the end of the day. I want to see every human being be successful. Okay. About you, Roshan, if you get the chance to teach kids, uh, what skills would you emphasize on young you know, kids? Just try to get them the fundamentals of the game. Uh -huh. Just teach them dribbling. Know, Dribbling, not over dribbling. Mm -hmm. Try to emphasize that the best move in the game is the pump fake, <laughs> by far. <laughs> um, yeah, I would always jump on that opportunity to, to pass on my knowledge to the youth uh -huh. so that they can maybe take it and prepare themselves for the future. Maybe pass on that jumper also. <laughs> <laughs> that jumper yeah, yeah. is nice. <laughs> that jumper is nice. Yep. Well, so, wow, it's been wow. over an hour, so... <laughs> That was fast. That was fast, actually. <laughs> so, went by so fast. Yeah. But you know, it's such an honor to have these two, you know, first class athletes to have with us. Two so, Nestor and Sean, of course. You guys actually ticked off our one item of our bucket list to get PBA players. Yeah, legit so, ballers. Oh, first, first yeah. 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 Yes. So, so thank you so much. For so, that. any, you know, you have any parting words? Yeah. Of course. What do you do, baby? <laughs> parting words, sir. Um. I would just like to thank you guys and your organization for having me here. I would like to thank Sean for bringing me in um, with the Colombian Jeep. I would like to thank the Colombian Jeep organization for having me here and um, all the fans that have been adding me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I just want want you guys to know that I appreciate the love that you guys have been um, giving me here in the Philippines and embracing me. 
you know. So um, I'll definitely, I'll definitely be back next year, you know, and, and um, I'll be probably five times better than I am now, if not ten. You know, I'm, I'm working on something to add to my game, so it's going to be pretty exciting. Of course, you know? we have to, of course, follow po natin si Lester Prosper here. That's Mr. Mr. Doc Prosper, Prosper yeah. on Instagram. Yes. So follow just that. to, you know, maybe hit the up, hit hit up and watch his eyes. Follow me. Right. How about you, How about you Sean? Words. Uh, words. Just want to thank you guys and, of course, you <laughs> for having us here. And uh, we appreciate you uh, taking your time out to just yep. have us shed some light on a few topics and hope to do it again sometime. Promote your Instagram also. Oh yeah, follow me on IG at R underscore MC underscore. I can show you some jump shot mechanics. Shot <laughs> 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 uh, You follow my stories and whatever, just having fun, you know. <laughs> For the Colombian team, they play last against... game po nila is Sunday against Ginebra. Yeah. We're going against the Kobe Bryant of uh, the Philippines, uh, Justin Brown. Yeah. You know, well, I got a message for you, Justin. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just joking, man. I'm just joking. He's an amazing player, man. It, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be real fun. That's it. Okay, okay, and that wraps up episode. Wait. Oh. Follow right. us on Instagram. Yeah. Of course, the, the Ultimate, Ultimate Fan, Fan Hub podcast. podcast. Of course. Also on our YouTube channel, just go search for the Ultimate Fan Hub podcast, where you can hear this episode. I know where. I really lost count. <laughs> oh, pangilang eh, kung pangilang episode. I think it's thir- it's either thirteen or fourteen. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> To be so, determined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So once again, this is the Ultimate Fan Hub Podcast for Sweet by the Fans. For the for fans. fans. Of course. Uh, once again, Jordan Samar, along with me, Jonas Reyes, and Si Chaka Malong. Thank good you night. for having us. Good and night. Good night, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.